All right. Um, Keep it as it is and we'll go back. Basically, Shiraj has, uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. So basically the history he has mentioned, I will not go through. I will directly go to, so this one is also covered, it's covered, covered, covered. And yeah, basic services. So yeah, this is one area uh, we really wanted to, uh, I really wanted to emphasize and um, to HR people to take into consideration, which is formula. Um, as um, Milna mentioned that minimum uh, employment act came to effect, that was in 2008, right? And then there was no formula given when it comes to calculation of salary. All it mentioned was maximum working hours is 48 hours, basically eight hours a day uh, in a week, 48 hours. Then beyond that, overtime has to be paid. Uh, however, in the minimum wage order, even though it was not mentioned, this particular formula, uh, prior to that, Economic Ministry has released a circular. Circular has given a formula which is to apply uh, 4.33 weeks um, in a month. So in a way, uh, we are making salary for 26 days. Um, when, when we look at it, most of the companies, the general practice in Maldives is paying salary um, based on calendar month, uh, regardless of number of days work. So basically uh, the hourly wage is uh, previously calculated based on uh, calendar month, which is basic salary divided by a number of uh, days in a month. And the, then you get a daily rate and then a hourly rate. However, in this particular formula, it was given a hourly rate. So therefore it is important to note that the wage is actually, this 8,000 is made for 26 days, not for 30 days. The only consideration is given to uh, 26 days, which is a, a actual working days. Uh, that was the reason why in a month, 4.33 is taken into consideration. And then uh, when it comes to hourly, uh, hourly rate, yeah, it, it should be analyzed in order to get accurate figure. Uh, otherwise, what will happen is if you are to pay overtime to a person who work on a public holiday, uh, public holiday, so you will most probably end up paying a uh, uh, wrong hourly rate. Uh, because of that, you might end up, uh, you know, having some argument with the staff member. So it is very, very important to focus on this particular formula. And then uh, when it comes to implementation, um, you know, minimum wage, minimum, minimum wage has already uh, announced. So now we are there to implement it as a HR person. Um, you got to walk around with other uh, department people or other people in the businesses, in, in the business, uh, basically to calculate various ways, uh, various options that are available. Um, how much, what are your current salary structure and how much are the total? And then um, you can put on various uh, scenarios. Like for example, scenario one, what if you put uh, include percentage of expatriates? So in, we know the fact that expatriates are not included in current minimum wage and we only need to include locals. However, there, there are companies, they are considering to impl uh, implement minimum wage together with the expatriate. So therefore, um, those who are in such a companies need to understand the implications they will face, or those who are applying even for a local companies or for applying only to locals also need to understand the, the implications, uh, cost implications, that come uh, due to minimum wage. 
And then uh, the uh, other thing is, uh, you know, when you start implementing minimum wage, according to law, it is only for locals. So there are chances that you might start losing some of the expatriate workers because uh, there could be companies applying minimum wage for expatriate workers or likelihood of uh, attracting more talents towards such a companies are very high. So as an HR person, um, you got to think about it and plan ahead um, before such a, uh, things are coming up. And then the uh, other thing is employee engagement. Yeah, well, due to minimum wage, uh, I'm sure that companies will start looking into more linear structure to get maximum out of um, staff members. So therefore, um, you know, if you are not, if you are, if 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 you have challenges to uh, engage employees towards um, attaining more productivity from them, then um, or if you are pressing them too much, um, then there, there is a possibility of draining them. So that, that's also one uh, area you got to look into. Not only uh, that, uh, you got to look at other cost implications factors. For example, uh, overtime. Current overtime is, as you know, that paid based on uh, what I have mentioned, um, the, the formula, which is 1.5, if it is, uh, um, if it is a public holiday and the 1.25, uh, it is if it is a normal day. So therefore, working on a public holiday on minimum wage could have a, a higher implications than uh, current um, currently what we are practicing because the base pay is already set to a minimum wage uh, for locals. Remember that. Uh, if if the expatriates are not into minimum wage, so then uh, uh, calculations needs to be um, it put into consideration that you know that expatriates exclude the minimum wage when it comes to uh, calculation calculating actual pay for them, right? Um, then the other thing is uh, this is one thing uh, communication when it comes to impl uh, implementing minimum wage. Uh, we hear many things uh, around minimum wage that our days, our off days are not included in minimum wage or certain uh, holidays are not included in, uh, not included in counting minimum wage. Actually, um, it, it, minimum wage is, for example, larger companies, which is 8,000. So 8,000 is given in a month period. So whether there is a public holiday or whether it or whether the rest day, you know, is there or not, at the end of the month, if the staff member present 100%, he gets 8,000. So this kind of communication needs to be made very clear to the team members. And then, um, and also the, the, the other thing is um, domino effect. For example, you may be implementing minimum wage to obviously baseline, uh, very low end uh, team members. And then uh, because of the in increase in salaries to them, then there is uh, the second level, uh, one level above will have uh, uh, either gap is equal or there, there may not be a gap. So you got to look into those factors as well when adjusting minimum wage. Um, some of the companies apply different ratios like maintaining certain level of parities. It, could, it depends on the company and their practices. It is important to look into uh, um, maintaining fair uh, parity between these two levels so then in future, when you are to adjust to minimum, when you uh, when you are to adjust salaries, then there will not be complications like uh, those who are uh, below uh, getting higher salary than those who are uh, in higher position. Uh, th these are the major things that you need to look into. A, a, um, as Deputy Minister mentioned, the minimum wage order has already uh, there up and then uh, the effective date of wage 
uh, distribution is uh, 1st January 2022. So therefore, uh, still we have, you know, one month and uh, another 10 days um, to start communicating, especially uh, um, those who are getting imp implicated due to minimum wage, how it is calculated and how much they will be getting after adjusting the minimum wage and what will happen on their day off, um, how, how the day of wage is calculated, things like that. We, uh, otherwise, what happens is misinformation may lead uh, to workplace in you know, uh, wrong direction. So the, this is a thing I wanted to highlight in my presentation as most of the things are covered in, in earlier presentations. So thank you, host.